Out where they say, let us be gay, I'm going Hollywood. I'll ballyhoo, greetings to you, I'm going Hollywood. Hey, while you sleepy hands are in that hay, I'll be dancing. I'm going to be dancing with a sun-kissed baby, and I'm on my way. Here's my beret. I'm going Hollywood. Hi, I'm David Duncan and welcome to Bing Crosby, The Hollywood Years. Well, 1934 was another big year for Bing at Paramount. He made three films that introduced ten new hit songs and he finally won the battle to have his ears fly free. <laughs> More on that later. We're Not Dressing is the fun title of his first film of the year that teamed him up with the wonderful cast of characters that included Carol Lombard, Ethel Merman, Leon Errol, George Burns and Gracie Allen, along with a very young Ray Milland. Based on the play The Admirable Crichton, Bing plays a singing sailor on a yacht that's owned by a rich, spoiled society girl, played by Carol Lombard. When the yacht is shipwrecked, the occupants swim to a nearby island where they find roles are suddenly reversed, and Bing the sailor is now in charge. Put me down! No, oh, I can't let you drown. Put me down, sailor! Don't be any more annoying than you can help. You put me down, all right. Are you going to let me starve to death? Well, say, if you want to eat, you got to work, just like the rest of us. Papa Spank. May I, with your very kind permission. Singing some wonderful hit songs composed by Mac Gordon and Harry Ravel, Bing softens the hard heart of Miss Lombard and also manages to serenade her pet bear who won't allow Bing to sing any other song except for Good Night Lovely Little Lady. You give me my chance. Good night lovely little lady. Now, if you think that's bizarre, it's nothing compared to when Leon Errol's character convinces Bing to put the bear on roller skates. She talks like you. While all of this is good fun on the screen, there was a serious side to things. Ray Milan stated in his autobiography that the Bears trainer had asked that any woman who was at that time of the month was not to be on set whilst the Bear was there. Now one of the women, however, had lied about her condition and the Bear suddenly went on a hormonally charged rampage that severely hurt the trainer who later died of his injuries. Because she reminds me of you. The making of the film included three weeks of shooting on Catalina Island, which was a happy experience for everyone. Carol Lombard got along really well with all the cast, especially Crosby. She loved to swear and used it to great effect, and she and Bing used to play off each other when the cameras weren't rolling by participating in a series of practical jokes. She'd occasionally enliven the set by flashing him and one morning at breakfast loudly called out, Bing, did I leave my nightie in your room last night? Of course it was all just a lot of fun and games, but there was one scene where things took a serious turn. Bing's character was called on to slap Carol in the face. She asked if they could try something else, but the director, Norman Torog, was insistent. Anyway, 
The moment came and Bing slapped her in the face, which sent Carol into a fit. She knocked Bing down and kicked and punched him until she was finally dragged off by crew members. Now once she calmed down, she apologised to everyone and explained that she just had a lifelong phobia about being slapped. Well, they must have done another take as there's no evidence in the finished film of that tantrum. Oh, I ought to slap your face. Oh, if it'd make you feel any better. As mentioned, Mac Gordon and Harry Ravel wrote a wonderful lineup of songs, including May I, Once in a Blue Moon, She Reminds Me of You, Good Night Lovely Little Lady, and the big hit, Love Thy Neighbour, all performed by Bing, who again was never in better voice. Offer to share his burden, tell him to say the word you will see. Bouncing around in the story, Ethel Merman was at her loudmouth best, playing off the Australian actor Leon Errol. Wash the dishes, I look at Ballyhoo. Let's play. Add George Burns and Gracie Allen to the mix, and you get a fun filled film that is still a joy to watch. Stop it, stop it, you're getting deaf. George, another surprise. Am I getting a one pound box or a two pound box? I love Daffy, that's my favorite candy. Stop it, you're getting nuts. Oh, well, George, if it's just the same to you, could I have Daffy without nuts? I've had it with Listen, nuts. Listen, try to understand what I'm talking about. You're just plain Daffy. Yeah, now, that's what I want, just plain Daffy. I'm crazy about just plain Daffy. You're crazy. Now, the reviews were only fair, but it did well at the box office when released in April of that year and has since become a firm favourite amongst fans of Bing's early films. Dearest one you are, a blessing from heaven above. Here are you, here am I. This is love. Next up, Bing was cast opposite Miriam Hopkins and Kitty Carlisle in the film version of the Broadway play She Loves Me Not. And it was during production that Bing finally won an all important battle with the studio. Other than Bing's first film appearance in 1930's King of Jazz, Every film after that required him to wear a toupee, and once he joined Paramount, he was also forced to endure the uncomfortable procedure of having his ears glued back, which caused constant problems. By the time She Loves Me Not went into production, Bing's stardom was secure. So finally, in one sequence when his ears continued to pop out, he insisted that they were going to stay out, and they did. So if you look carefully, you'll notice the difference between the early scenes when they were stuck back and the later scenes when they were allowed to fly free. Apart from that little drama, the production went very smoothly. Miriam Hopkins plays a nightclub singer who witnesses a murder and goes on the run to avoid being called in as a witness. Hiding out in a college dormitory, she's assisted by Bing and his roommate, who disguise her by dressing her up as a boy to evade the authorities. But what we can do is dress her up like a boy, keep people from getting close to her. At a distance, she'll pass. She's your kid cousin. Just come down to visit you and see Princeton. Wait a minute, Mr. Lawton. Don't spare the voice. All right. Remember, you brought this on yourself. I know the words that I use are simple and not very smart but what I say I say to you straight from the shoulder right from the heart others may sing of the spring the story is helped along by some fine songs once again written by Mac Gordon and Harry Ravel but the big hit song of the film, Love in Bloom, was actually written by the songwriting team of Ralph Ranger and Leo Robin, who had written the hit song, Please, for being two years earlier. Can it be the trees that fill the breeze with rare and magic perfume? Oh no, it isn't the trees, it's love in bloom. 
be the spring that seems to bring the stars right into this moon. Oh, no, it isn't the spring. It's love in blue. Now, Love in Bloom was the first of the Crosby film songs to be nominated for an Academy Award in the newly initiated category of Best Song. However, it lost out to the Continental from the Fred Astaire Ginger Rogers musical, The Gay Divorcee. This hour of sweet This film also marks one of the last times that Bing actually sang live on set with an orchestra. After 1934, the standard practice was to pre-record the songs and then lip-sync while filming the scene a few days later. There were instances in later films when he did sing live on set, but for sound quality reasons, this was generally avoided. She Loves Me Not outgrossed all of Bing's previous pictures, so Paramount quickly decided to team him up again with Kitty Carlisle in the film that would finally display the relaxed Crosby persona that the world would come to know. It's June in January because I'm in love. Here Is My Heart went into production in late August 1934 and was based on a play called The Grand Duchess and the Waiter. Bing plays a famous singing star who's on a quest to do all the things he wanted to do as a kid. He's also on a mission to buy an ancient dueling pistol to complete his collection. I've always wanted to present these pistols to the Naval Academy in Annapolis. But finds that it's owned by an aloof Russian princess played by Kitty Carlisle, who has no interest in selling it. So, Bing buys the hotel she's staying in and disguises himself as a waiter to infiltrate the princess's inner circle. Well, are you stupid or impertinent? Stupid, madam. And impertinent. Waiter. Yes, sir. What is that wine? Why, this is uh, Rousseau, 1911. Mm. Really a very middle-class wine, sir. Now, might I suggest uh, Octave, 1909? Drunk in all the best places. Who is? The wine, Kukushka, the wine. Before too long and after crooning some beautiful songs, Bing playing the waiter and the princess fall in love until she discovers who he really is and runs away. But when I wake from dreams divine Every breath that I take Is a prayer that I'll make The two of them are reunited in the end and sail away into the sunset. It's June in January Because I'm in love Oh, I'm in love Oh, only because I'm in love It's a fun little film and supported by a great cast of veteran stage performers including Roland Young, Reginald Owen, Alison Skipworth and Bing's longtime friend William Frawley. Kitty Carlisle said that Bing was so impressed that he turned to her one day during filming and said, you know, what the hell are we doing starring in this movie with these folks? He, he just couldn't get over the fact that they were the supporting cast. Songwriters Ralph Ranger and Leo Robin once again supplied a score of great songs that all became hits. These included Lovers Just Around the Corner, With Every Breath I Take, and June in January that dominated the record sales charts for nearly two months. It's June in January Because I'm in love Oh, I'm in love It all Now the reviews of the film glowed with praise for Bing, with the New York Daily News saying, Bing Crosby is something more of a crooner. He's a comedian with a perfect sense of timing. I better get back to the boat. 
Well, take me with you, will you? Oh, I can't do that. Why not? I couldn't stand it, old boy. You mean I'm repugnant to it? Oh, no, no, no. I mean, you remind me of her. Oh, you mean we look alike? Not the slightest resemblance. That's right. Now, there's been a lot said by critics and fans that this film showed Bing finally being comfortable playing a character in front of the camera, and I, I think I know why. Firstly, he was surrounded by well-respected actors, so he knew he had to do his best. Frank Tuttle was the director, who'd worked well with Bing on the big broadcast back in 1932, and had a great flair for directing comedy, while Carl Struss, the Academy Award-winning cinematographer, shot the film in a way that brings out the best in all the performers. But I really think the main contributing factor to Bing's change from his previous films was the fact that he finally didn't have to go through the procedure of having his ears glued back. I mean, one can only imagine the anxiousness of shooting a scene with the thought that at any moment, an ear would pop out and ruin a take. Finally, now he could relax and concentrate on doing his best to play the part and enjoy it along the way. So, 1934 had been a big year for Bing in films, and he was rewarded by landing seventh in the polls of the top 10 box office stars in the United States. But before finishing out the year, Bing made a brief appearance in an MGM short entitled Star Night at the Coconut Grove and sang his hit song, With Every Breath I Take, that was from his film, Here Is My Heart. I think of you with every breath I take And every breath becomes a sigh Not a sigh of despair But a sign that I care for you More great films and songs were to come along in 1935, so join me then, next time, on Bing Crosby, The Hollywood Years. And your name is a song I'll remember the long years through Even though I walk alone you guide me In the darkness you light my way and all the while inside me, love seems to say, Song.